Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here and six months ago I needed a new computer so I decided to build what I call the budget beast Hackintosh. Now six months later the question is, was it worth it? Stick around. Perfect. Alright, so on this channel we do tech and home theater unboxings, reviews, demos and tips, all in 4K HDR. So when I was building a PC, I knew it had to be pretty powerful because even though at the time I was still producing videos in 1080p, I knew I'd be making the jump to 4K very soon. So let's go over the specs. It's an ASUS Strix F Gaming motherboard with a Z370 chipset and that's for the Intel 8700K processor. It's unlocked because I wanted to overclock it. I had 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z RAM coming in at 3400 megahertz. The CPU cooler was an NZXT Kraken X42 and spoiler alert, that was not enough to overclock it. And of course, the graphics card was the ASUS Strix Vega 64. I got this video card because I thought it would handle 4K video very well. When I was building it, I also got some Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM. I didn't end up using that one, I went with the G-Skill instead, so I'll be giving it away. So stay tuned to the end of the video for details on how to win it. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, hey, with those specs, how is this a budget build? Well, some parts are recycled from my older Hackintosh, like the power supply, the hard drives, and some of the cables. So since the build, I've actually made some upgrades. The first thing I added was a one terabyte Samsung NVMe drive. It's the 970 EVO and it is insanely fast. I added another 16 gigs of memory and I changed the power supply to a Corsair HX850. The power supply I got from the older build was a Corsair HX750, but I had to replace it because it just couldn't handle the Vega 64. It would have random reboots and at one point it actually corrupted my hard drive because of the random reboot. All right, so I've talked enough specs, so let's get down to business. Was it really worth building this Hackintosh? The short answer is no, it was not. So why do I think that? Well, first of all, let me just preface this by saying that I have no problems building a computer. I actually like doing that. Now, my opinion may be different if I had chosen another graphics card because the Vega 64 is the cause of a lot of my issues. Now, first and foremost is the thing that everyone who has had this card in a Hackintosh could likely tell you, the fan noise. The fan runs at full speed constantly. It has moments when it slows down, but for the most part, it's always audible, and I mean very loud. From the moment you boot, it's going full tilt and it really slows down. I've seen online where people have found workarounds for this, like opening QuickTime, or upgrading their OS, or even editing texts, but none have worked for me, at least not permanently. There'll be times when it gets quiet, but then it just ramps up for no apparent reason. And another thing is the whining sound that the coils make on the GPU whenever there's a GPU intensive task happening. I've read where people have solved this issue by upgrading their power supply to a more high quality one, but my power supply is pretty high quality and pretty expensive, so I'm not gonna just throw it away. Issue number three is the case fan. Now, I had the exhaust fan connected to the chassis fan number two on the motherboard, and it would just not turn on under macOS. It would work fine on the Windows, but whenever I switch to macOS Mojave, it would just not work. So the fix for this is to actually go into the BIOS and change the fan mode from DC to PWM. DC allows the system to manage the fan speed based on the system temperature, so when you change it to PWM, you'll also have to change the fan profile. You can copy the DC profile and it'll work fine. That was an easy fix and it brought my CPU temperatures down at least 5 degrees. Number 4 is a simple fix thankfully, but I'm sure there are others out there who are having a similar problem. That is onboard video. Make sure to disable the onboard video in the BIOS. I didn't and it led to a lot of glitches and freezes in Final Cut whenever I was rendering. There were times that the entire computer would freeze and I'd have to hard reboot. Oh, and the RGB lighting? It won't look like that. So whenever you restart your computer on the macOS, all your lighting reverts to their default settings. That's more of a FYI though, so. Those are the tips and advice I have for you based on the major issues I faced over the past six months. But why did I say that I don't think the computer was actually worth it? All right, so a big part of why I built this computer was to edit videos, and what I edit are 4K HDR videos. So 4K HDR videos for YouTube has to be delivered in a 10-bit H.265 format. And the only computers that can actually process those videos using hardware acceleration are Macs with a T2 chip. So that includes the Mac Pro, the MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini, but not the iMac, strange enough. So that means all the videos I encode has to be done using software acceleration, and that takes a long time. 
a long time. So a typical, say, 10 minute video could actually take over four hours to encode, four. Now, if I had a more powerful CPU, then that time would be less, but when I was building the computer, the 8700K was the best processor available. Damn you, Intel! So use my misfortune as a learning opportunity. If you plan to encode H.265 videos in 10-bit, then you will only be doing so using software rendering. If you're rendering 8-bit video though, then you will have hardware acceleration. So there are plenty of resources out there to guide you on building your Hackintosh, from the best hardware to use, to all the software you need. Tony Mac x86 is actually what I use and they are a great resource. And unless something has changed, don't get a Vega 64 unless you have a case with some good sound isolation. All right, so let's end on a more positive note, the giveaway. All right, so first of all, this has nothing to do with the Apple TV 4K giveaway for the 5,000 subscriber milestone. This is completely different. All you have to do to win this is be a subscriber and leave a comment down below. It's that simple. I'm thinking of keeping it open until about the end of April so everyone has a chance to see the video and I'll announce the winner on Twitter. So make sure to follow me there. Don't forget to like the video if you found it informative or helpful. Until next time, this has been your friend in Neighborhood Villa Man saying, Peace.